Amen. Hey, I've been kind of discouraged lately. I, I will tell you the truth. You know, I'm a human being. I'm flesh. There's just so much going on in the world that's discouraging. And I always, I always say that it's the only way for me to be discouraged is to go to God's Word to be encouraged Amen. from my discouragement that I see. You know, you look at you. You turn on TV nowadays. Nothing good. Nothing good. You turn on. You got to look at something that does not. You know what I mean? You got to disconnect yourself from this world sometimes. So I got a channel on my, on my TV. It's, it's uh, it's, it's called uh, it's, it's it's this channel where they just go to different islands and visit. I watch that. You know, look at something different because there's just too much going on. We know the devil is busy. He's at play. He's always throwing his best shot out there. He needs some soldiers to go with him to that place that nobody can return from. That's hell. And so, and so, in all these young people, they're just recklessly giving their minds away to the devil. And they don't think there's any, any kind of um, recompense for the, the sins that they do in the body. Physically or spiritually. There is, there, is a, there is a reward for that. There is a recompense for that. God does not, that God doesn't forget anybody. Anyone's deeds, God does not forget it. And so, a lot of times, you know, we regret. We can, we can, if we live long enough, we can tell people why we did stuff when we were young. Because we were stupid. Amen. We were stupid. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people say, I regret it doing this or that. But, you know, when they're in that particular time and in that particular age, they're, they're doing it. They don't regret it then. Mm. They're doing it. But... I guess this lesson is more for me to give me hope that because I was that way, I wouldn't. I wasn't reckless like a lot of a lot of people. I know. They know I wasn't reckless like that. I did my stuff. I was. Uh, I was. Um, I told my wife, I'm gonna cover this up right here. I told my wife I was trying on some pants yesterday, and I, you know, it wasn't anywhere to. It wasn't anywhere to go and try them on. So I tried them on right there in the store. I, you know, I put them on top of my clothes. If they fit on top of my clothes, I know they'll fit when I get home. I just got an extra layer. I just got to buy one size, maybe a smaller, a larger. I tried them on. But as I tried them on, I remembered something. And I told my wife, I'm covering this up right here. Covering this up. Because I told them, when I was young, I remember going into a certain store. And I put some pants on. I put my pants on over them pants. And I walked out the store with them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the pants no more. I, I remember mother didn't get caught, thank God. But I'm nothing to tell it. That was stupid. That was stupid. I never do nothing like that again. I took the pants off when I was there trying them on. I took them off and I wouldn't pay for them at the cash register. So, so all I'm saying, we'll look at this, Paul. Look at this, this lesson. It's called the radical Saul who was changed by Jesus' Jesus's life. The radical Saul. And this is the one of the baddest dudes on the planet. Mm. He was. He's better than any of these cats you see out here not chunking rocks and running. Mm. He would sit there at the event that was going on. He wasn't running. He would sit there at the event. Mm -hmm. But these cats right now, they got all kinds of things going on where you can't see them. You know, you can't see their face. You don't know how they look. They didn't run. They in a crowd of people. And they throwing the rock, and everybody else getting in trouble. They going home, and so and so. This is how spirituality is as well, because the devil is throwing out this or that. You can believe whatever you want. You can, he's throwing out. You can go to church where you want to go to church at. And these are rocks too. You can go to church. You can say what you want to say. And still, God, will, you can glorify God, and that what you're saying. A guy told me yesterday. God bless his soul. He's trying. He said, I'm going to get, when I, that was, it was Friday. Now, I'm not going to say the word. He said, I'm going to get, I told, I told the Lord that I was going, I wasn't going to work this weekend. I'm going to get effed up. I said, I, I, I listened to him. I said, I said, and he said it again. I said, no, nah, I said, the Lord didn't tell you he was going to get effed up. And you showed it talk to him. I, I ain't, I, you showed him talk to the Lord. I know that for a fact. But he didn't tell you he was going to get effed up, you know. And then he kind of toned it down a little bit. No, I ain't gonna drink. I ain't gonna do it like that. I'm just gonna drink a little bit, maybe some wine. Hey, you gonna get up though. That's what's gonna happen. That's what you said. But you, you, you put in yourself. You're saying you put in something in God's word, in God's mouth, that you're gonna regret. You're gonna regret it. So, but we're gonna look at Paul's life, a little bit of Paul's life, 
and see how his life calmed down. His life calmed down quite a bit. Look at Acts 22. We're going to start there. We're going to start in Acts 22. Because we want to know a little bit about who he was. It's amazing that, that God can change a person's life. Yes. No matter who he is. And so, you know, don't get too caught up in what you believe as a young person. Because as you get older, you might regret it. You might regret it. I seen a video of a man. He had a, he had a sex change when he was little. And as he grew up, he changed back into a man. But he couldn't go back and change what he had did physically to his body. Oh. But uh, he, had, he had regretted it. He was talking right. But, you know, physically he, he was a man now. But... He had some. He had some physical limitations now. You know, mm -hmm. if he wanted a wife, he probably could possibly get one. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's certain fulfillments inside of a marriage that you know you can only fulfill. Well, you can you can fulfill them in your mind and your desire, but mm -hmm. you can't physically fulfill those things now because you've changed. You've changed your uh, your sex. Mm -hmm. So so, don't be too 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 in a rush. Amen. Don't be too in a rush as a young person to go out and do something stupid that you're going to regret later. Amen. People put on tattoos all over their body and then they can't get them off after they change. This is wrong. They ain't going to get them burnt off your body. I mean, so let's look at Saul's life. Let's look at Saul's life. You got a comment, my brother? Yeah. Yeah, he, he right about that. You do regret things that you do. Um, and, you know, I, I learn from other people's mistakes. Um, it's just like you see a man on the corner, he, he's been heavily sedated with drugs, and he be shaking and twitching. I'd be like, oh, I'm not going that route. I can't do it. He, whatever he had, I do not want it. I do not want it. But uh, people still see that, and they still do the opposite. It's just like when you when you when you go around and you and like with your friends, family members and stuff and you and you you look at their their actions and then the choices that they make and you be like, Oh, you know, I don't I don't wanna go that route, you know. He or she did that, did that, did this and it's like, you know, I don't wanna do that. So as a young man growing up, you know, through the years, um, you look at a lot of things that go on in people's lives, you know, like Mother, father, uh, you know, get divorced. Mother and father separate, have kids, get divorced. And so you, you look at it to the point to where, as a young man, I, I think I grew up, how can I say, I, was, I think I was an old man in a young man's body. Because I, I looked at marriage, I looked at people going to prison, you know, people mm -hmm. s dope. And uh, it was like, you know what, I don't want to go that route. Even though I had common sense, you know, what I'm saying? I did little things that I wasn't supposed to have done, but I knew to the fact that what I didn't do it, so I regret it in the long run. Amen. We do it because we feel that by love, we want this, we want that, but we don't think about the consequences that we that we look forward ahead. It's just like when you invest in stock, we want it now. You know, what I'm saying instead of waiting to the long run, it's going to be good. But if we just wait, patience. be patient, yeah, and that's what every, everything evolves around us because the choices that we make in our lifestyle, like I say, it can either hurt us or either it, it can, it can it, it, to the point it can make your life an adventure, but also it can, help, it can also hurt those who are around you as well. If you're a dope dealer, what do you expect is going to happen to your family if, if you cheat somebody? Guess what? Your family is going to be involved in that what you do so that's why i say as you get older you look even though you got old fools you know you have fools that's in their 50s they six they still old fools but you have to look at it and say okay if i do this and do that what is the consequences in the long run it might not hit you right there and then even though you got away with it but in the long run it can hit you, nip you in the bud just like you say with the tattoos you can't get tattoos erased but it won't be like your old, like your body. I mean, like your skin was before. You can erase it, but you still have like little dentures in your skin from the tattoo being removed. But as you get older, you look at a lot of things in life, 
And, you, and, and, and that's when we get older, we tell our kids, don't do that. Yes. Do this. I'm not stirring you. On. I've been through that road. Mm -hmm. So I want, I'm actually telling you now, do not go that route. Please do not go that route. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're hard-headed. They're going to do it anyway. They want to test out the wall the next day. Daddy, you told me. You I said, I told you, baby. But I said, now I said, it's like this. You tell your child, don't hang around this person. They bad influence on you. I can see it because I've been down that road. Don't do it. But when you tell them the next day, you know something happened. They call you from jail. Daddy, I'm in jail. For what? Well, uh, he went in that route the liquor store with baby. You going to do just fine. I'm going to roll over me and, your, me and your mama eat Popeye's chicken dinner. And I get with you to get with you tomorrow. We'll get a court, get to see what's going on. But baby, just be safe in there and look out for, and, and look out for yourself. I can't help you because I didn't told you. I tried to help you. So that's why I say we have to learn. Even though if a person is telling you what to do and what not, sometimes we have to take heed. But sometimes we learn from other people's mistakes, and that's what that, and that's what life is all about. We because the Bible right here, everything that we do. It's all in here. It's already in here. So we just got to take heed and read the scriptures and study to show ourselves proof so we can, so we, it is like this. Do not let your mind control you. You control your mind. Because wherever your mind goes, you're going to follow. So when you know how to control your mindset, that's why I say we can change our clothes, our hair, our, our nails, our, and all this stuff, but we can't change our mindset. So that's what leads us into destruction is our mind. You are your own worst enemy. So we can't blame it on, I can't blame it on you, I can't blame it on Ozzy, I can't blame it on anybody else. We control our destiny and, and God gives us the seed in our mind. This is the seed that he gives us to control our thoughts, the way we think, the way we act. We control ourselves. So we, we can't blame nobody else but you the man in the mirror that you blame yourself on. Amen. 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 Encouraging that brother to bring that lesson when he's going to bring it. Uh, he ready to bring it. <laughs> Amen. Hey, brother William told me, told me when he, before, before he got baptized, he said he can come over here and teach us all before he got baptized. I remember working for him, working yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. I can come and teach all y'all. <laughs> you still waiting, bro. Come on, brother. You're teaching on side. Come on up here, brother. Hey, Amen. Good, good, good thoughts, brother. Good thoughts. Good thoughts. <laughs> Let's go to our 22. Good thoughts, brother, because all that's, all that's up in here. All that's up in this lesson. Yes. But I think the reason I, this lesson is, is good for me is that I see hopelessness when I see hope in God's Word. Mm -hmm. Everybody shooting at YouTube about what's really wrong. Well, this is what's wrong. Yes. This is what's wrong right here. You need, you need the Lord. Yes. Everybody needs the Lord. So we've got to throw these seeds out there and see, it, see what they catch. Mm. See what they catch. So, Matthew, so Acts 22, and verse number 1 says, Acts 22. Acts 22, verse number 1. We're going to jump around. we got some verses. We're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to jump around to some other chapters to pinpoint uh, how Saul, what, what Saul's attitude was at this time. Uh, look at the, right now he's giving a, we're going to read it. Men and brethren, men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. Verse 2, and when they heard that he spank in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silent. And he said, I am verily a man, which I'm a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city of Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers. And was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. This man had his own religion. Mm -hmm. He had his own religion. Today, people had their own religion. Mm -hmm. their own religion. Whatever, whatever it is that you think is gets you close to God, and it's your religion. You haven't got it from God. That's your own religion. Yes, yes. If you believe that hate, hating your neighbor, hating the person that you just see. Is your religion? That's what you're gonna do. That's what you speak at. That's what comes out your body, yeah. and we can see it. That's your religion. That's your religion. If you believe in just keeping quiet and not being in the fight, 
and you, you believe maybe just I'm just a good person. I'm gonna just love that person. Mm-hmm. That's still your own religion. Yes. That's still your own religion because we got examples of all of these things in the Bible. All these different personalities in the Bible. Cornelius was a good man. He was a good man, but yet he needed to hear what it was that he needed to do to be saved. Mm-hmm. He did good. He gave money to people. He gave he gave his own, he gave his time. And you know he kept his family in line, and you know they, they respected him, but yet still having he was he, he may have been good standing, notable person in the, in the community. He still needed to hear what it was that he needed to do. Mm-hmm. And then when Peter came to his house, he gave he yielded to Peter to what Peter had to say. So so there are all kinds of personalities up under the earth, all kinds, and, and we have all kinds of nations where tradition reigns true. You know, in tradition, I believe that, that the sisters in here, maybe some brothers in here, can cook some real good food. But nobody has has the the, the patent on cooking. Go in anybody's go in anybody's kitchen in the world, and they cook good stuff. They got their rules in their kitchen. They got their rules in their kitchen. They cook good, and I will sit down at that table and eat it. But you don't have the patent on cooking and, and, and making a recipe. Oh, that's, that's good food all over the world. Some traditions are good and some are not. So there are all types of different things. But Paul's thing, this is what's his religion. Paul, Paul had his own beliefs. Verse 4 says, And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Let's, re- let's remember something. That there are people still doing this today. Yes. We just don't know about it. There are religious people today. The church of Satan. You know, we hear about people coming up missing off the street, babies, and never find them. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not there. I don't know. I don't know where they went to. But I know some of them don't get found. Mm-hmm. But I know there's a big effort all over the country right now. You know, all flows. They make pipelines of all flows all over the place. And uh, what they do, they standardize the all so it all flows, and everybody can use it anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They standardize it. You can use it in any kind of car in, up on the, all over the earth. Standardize it. Well, that's one means of, of, of this, how this economy works. But did you know there's an underground where, where countries trade human beings? Yes. It's the oldest trade in the world. They're still doing it. Yes. You hear about, you hear about, uh, you hear lately uh, about 20, 20, 20 people from uh, MS-13 were, were caught. They had, a, had one of those underground, underground rings. Y'all didn't hear about it. See, it's, not on the main, it's not on the news because they don't talk about it, of course. They don't want you to know about it. Yeah, well, see, MS-13 comes across the border. That's why your boys are, that's why your boys are getting shut down because they can come across freely. And so they get these young people, these young children, and they traffic them all over the world. Just like oil. Traffic them all over the world. And people actually use these little children. Oh, it's amazing. They come up missing. People actually use them. And a lot of these people have money and power. Mm-hmm. You'll never know this happens. So it's like oil. Like oil. And so, so, and so that's their religion. They have a, a religious group that, that meets out in San Francisco. I think William knows that, that place out there. And they, they gather in the woods. They burn fires at night. You know. Mm-hmm. Very prominent group of people. These people, uh, have sacrifices. They're not animal sacrifices. They're not possums. They're not rats. They got plenty of those dead, dead animals out there you could use. But what they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna sacrifice living human beings. Oh my goodness. Live human beings. Yeah. You know some people like to eat the animals. They like the animals trying to like they like live animals. Yeah. You get them out get them out the, get them out the ocean and then when they when they put them on the table cut them, they still jump around. Yes. And then they just cut them right because they know they're fresh. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you know, people have all kinds of twisted ideas of what religion is. And I, I, mean, I hate to say that it's, re- it's ridiculous to take a life, somebody's baby you took off the street, kill them, drink their blood, and eat their flesh. Come on, now, that's ridiculous. That's their religion. It's a sick, sad truth that we don't talk about very much. But I, sometimes I have to just say it. Yes. Because it's the truth. It's the truth, the truth we don't hear about. Because we're sheltered in this country from certain things. So this is Paul's religion. And this is his one. Yeah. He murdered people. Mm. And he thought it was okay. Mm. Well, that's sad. That's a twisted mind person, right? You taking you murdering people because what they believe? Christian people for what they believe? Persecuted for what they believe? 
If this is if this was happening today, many of us would run from a church. Right. And I'm not talking about Jesus, no. <laughs> but no, some of those apostles were were killed. Some of their deaths were were they were terrible. Yes. Behead beheadings, you know, burnt the cross, these type of things. These people did a lot. But we don't have to be burnt. And we have to we have to have spiritual rocks through it because we say something that somebody don't like. Because it's the truth. Jesus died for that same reason. So verse five, Acts twenty two and five says, And also the high priest do it bear me witness in all the estates of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem. For to be punished. Now, is this right? Is this right? can this be right in here? Let us to the brother, unto the brethren from the elders, mm, elders and the high priest. Oh, my goodness, Lord help us. Mm. You see how twisted that is. Yeah. So, so in other words, so in other words, let's put it in perspective. Okay, I say we had we had all everything in place. We had elders and deacons, brother Jefferson and I. Uh, uh, see who else. Well, who else was it? Javier? Mm -hmm. Was it uh, Dwayne? Yes. Um, Leo Powers? We get together, and you know we put together we put together letters to give to William yes. to go to other congregations to bring other congregations to prison so we can murder them. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's the amount. I mean, yes. William, William, he's the man. Here, and they're not gonna try to get away from him because he's gonna handle them. Yeah. Bring them on, William. Uh -uh. You see, so so that's the scenario right there. Mm -hmm. And then y'all sitting, y'all coming to worship, y'all don't know nothing about this. We're doing this. Y'all don't know nothing about it. We, we're doing it as elders. We're doing this overseers. Mm -hmm. And y'all coming to worship, and everything's good. with Y'all singing the, 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 the songs and giving your money, praying. And y'all think y'all smiling, but y'all don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you did know it, you think it's all right, and it's really twisted. Mm -hmm. It really got real bad for the church. But that's what's happening right here. That's right. So it says, and it came to pass that as I made my journey, now this is this is the part we need. This is the part of repentance and change. As I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus, about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground, unto the ground, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? So we know this had to be the church of Christ that he was he was persecuting. Because this is the voice from heaven. We see this in red. We know this is the Lord talking to Saul. Why persecuted thou me? Now you have to grab a person's attention because he thinks he's doing what's right. People out there in the street throwing bricks and highlighting and killing people and burning stuff right now. They think they're doing what's right. One person said that I think they called him and I think they I mean the officials or police might have caught this one person. And they asked him, well, why, why are you doing what you're doing? He said, man, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm just doing it. I need, I'm, they're sending me money. Somebody sent me a text, and I go get the money, and I go out there. I don't know why you're doing what you're doing. Mm. But you got, but you know what? You're doing that. They're not. They're not doing it. You're doing it. Somebody sent me a text all the time and say, go do this and go do that. I don't even look at it. Mm -hmm. So right. they're doing that. That's right. Because that's what they want to do. That's what right. they want to do. Somebody, they, they talk with a statue. They toppled a statue in the city, and, and the city council lady told them, told the police to stand back. And they toppled the statue, and the statue fell on somebody. Oh my. Gave them a permanent life damage. Oh my goodness. Now they're going after the, the person who told them, the police to stop, the city council. Because he allowed it to happen on private property. She allowed it to happen on private property. Somebody always going to get hurt by somebody else's decisions. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you know, come on. We don't think about other people when we do stuff. Mm-hmm. It's coffee. Man. Brother Keith, I was sitting here uh, thinking about that's why in our man, in his own righteousness, yes, he is flawed. Mm -hmm. And that's we why are. we need Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why we need Jesus in our life because in our own, man's righteousness will even as Christians, once we've obeyed the gospel, our righteousness will never exceed that of our Lord and Master. And when you think about Paul, I was just thinking about Paul. 
Paul was Saul on the other side before Jesus got a hold of him yeah. on the Damascus mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. But he thought what he was doing was right. Was right. That would be, you were speaking about how different ones have their own right. view of what religion what is. is. Right. But on the Damascus Road, when Jesus uh, said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou? Mm -hmm. He's kicking against the pricks. He didn't yeah. understand he was hurting himself. Right. And you know, when we think about all the old saints, when you look in the Old Testament, uh, godly men and women, it, uh, you'll see where they had to be changed you know yes. they were flawed they yes. were they loved god mm -hmm. but they were flawed and god yeah. had to teach them. Mm -hmm. that's why we need jesus there's no one no one that can be compared to our lord mm -hmm. savior and our god god the father who loved his the world so much that he said his son mm -hmm. but the point i was trying to uh, I, I wanted to bring out too you know something that i observed from this too mm -hmm. When Paul was on the other side, you were talking about those who have done things on the mm -hmm. other side and now in their heart they're truly repentant of right. it. And now they regret that they did it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think about once you're saved, it's about looking forward, not looking back. Right. That's what Satan wants you to do. Amen. And you know, when you put on the whole arm of God, it's yeah. about going forward, Amen. not looking back. God is not concerned about where you've been. He's yeah. concerned about where you're going. Wow. But I was just thinking about how Saul, even as Saul, you know he was a man about being busy. You know what made he came was. to my mind? <laughs> he was a God can't use a lazy man. Amen. Yeah, that's right. He did what he said. He, he was did. doing it wrong. Yeah. God had to but but God God knew he did it in ignorance. Paul alluded to that. He said, I did it in ignorance. In ignorance. And you know we'll use ignorance. I am ignorant to some things. It's a lot, all of us are ignorant to, but all it simply means is lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the truth. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus got a hold of him, that's why I like the scripture, but God. Because when God get a hold of you, but God knew his heart. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, he was the one, I believe, that held the coat of uh, Stephen, the gospel yeah. preacher, when he was that. being stoned to death. Mm -hmm. So he was going about it wrong, but he was doing something. Mm -hmm. And if you think there are those of us, men, women, who on the other side, until Jesus got a hold of us, we did some things wrong. Yes, we because we thought we were right in our own sight. And even, and even things that we know we had been taught. That's why I was thinking about when Brother Craig was bringing that up about how you you know you try to tell these young people and and there are some old pe older people too okay. that still tipping still doing things that they know is but the bottom line is it it's uh it's lack of knowledge and they think that they way is a better way that's right. until jesus get a hold of it wow. and that's what i was thinking on one side he was saw he was persecuted he was killing he, he, he lacked knowledge of what God really wanted him to do. But when Jesus got a hold of him on the Damascus Road, he was all about Jesus then. Amen. And, and, and you know, it lets you know too that God forgives you of sin. There are some consequences for sin. But God said, I'll remember them no more. And that's simply because of the... Uh, you know, like I said, there are consequences for sin. We know that when we look at David's life. I don't need to go back to that. But God said he was a man after his own heart. God loved Amen. David. Amen. And God loves each and every one of us. We've made mistakes. And thank God for even on this side, being Christians, yes. we have the gift of repentance, a gift Amen. of forgiveness. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The only hope we got, sister. Yeah. So much despair and so much going on in the world. You know, it's, it's all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But which Jesus are you following? And which one are you following? Because we're going to see that he thought he was following the right one. Mm -hmm. Like Sister Carl kind of alluded to. You know, because he answers, he answers Christ right. Mm -hmm. You know, he answers, he's going to ask him in the very, I think in the very next uh, few verses, he's going to answer God right. Because he's going to call out to Saul. But, you know, a lot of us are making mistakes in life. But it can be corrected. And that's what, that's what the hope is in this lesson. It can be corrected. No matter who you are. But if your heart is not right, and if you're proud, you're never going to change. But we know what goes before for pride. What comes after pride? The fall. The fall comes. Because God can't do nothing with a prideful person. 
And Paul at this point, was he proud or not? We're going to read and find out. So he says, in verse number 7, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Verse 8 says, And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? You see, he answered right. So, apparently he thought he was doing right. Mm -hmm. he, who, is it, who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecuted. Now, just think about that for a minute. He answers, Who art thou, Lord? Lord. He said, he, Like Jesus, almost has to introduce himself. I'm a Lord who thou persecuted. Then you do you know this? No, obviously you didn't. That's why I'm gonna that's why I'm gonna knock you down to the ground right now. Yes. Because you don't know it. And so and so people don't know this. But there's some people we have talked to they already know. It. You keep on going back and re recircling, going around them same people telling them the same thing. But just keep on moving. Find somebody else. But they're gonna do the same old thing. Next time next time you see them, they're gonna be telling you, man, I'm gonna get effed up. <laughs> I'm going to get my check cash and I'm going to get effed up. I know what that means. No, Y'all know what that means, right? I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's the effed up word, you know. You know I, I don't even use the word no more. You know, but you know what that means, right? You, you haven't completely gave your, you haven't gave your life to the Lord yet. You know, um, um, I had a conversation with a young man and he, 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 knew, he knew it all. Not, not downtrodden him or nothing like that. He knew it all. Conversation was, you know, we were talking and the conversation was good. But when it came down to it, the last thing I asked him, I said, What is the gospel? He was like, That still works. Yeah. This was, this was Christ said, what is the gospel? After all the conversation over, what is the gospel? A trick question or something? <laughs> that was the answer. That was the response. A trick, that was a trick question. Is this a trick question? No, because you're lost. That's the right. Bible says, The Bible says that. If you, it says that um, if the gospel is hid, it is hid to those that are lost. Mm -hmm. So you're lost. Well, what else can you say? You know, but in the, even in the conversation, you know a seed was planted. That's the whole hope. A seed was planted. You ain't gonna fight with nobody, man. Come on, let's go with it, man. Come on. I ain't gonna fight nobody. I'm getting off the wrist, off the rice in my hand. No. But I have to keep it moving like this just to keep it from sticking up. Yeah. I work for a living. I don't get a check from the government. I'm not, a, you know, I'm a social security. It's fine. I don't get free checks from the government. I'm, I don't have no long star card. I work for a living. I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. Use it till you go get a job. Mm -hmm. You understand that you try to get married to a guy. He lays and sits up on the couch, and you don't want to work. And he got a long star card. I ain't got to work, baby. Oh. And then you understand that then, oh, yeah. oh. Speak truth. See, All people right. nowadays, you can speak, yeah, you can say that's to the people nowadays. They got something smart to say, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Wait till it's your turn. And they're going to say, oh, I remember what that old dude said. Mm. I know, I remember now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to gank the government because they give you a long story. Now you're trying to gank it. You're trying to sell it to somebody home. Well, you want to buy some, you want to buy some cash, man. I want to buy some, mm. I want to buy some liquor. Oh, I want to buy some cigarettes, man. I can't buy it with this long stuff. Cause I got all going to buy is milk and baby food oh. and some diapers, maybe. But I need to, I need something for me, man. It's a little something to, mm. to stimulate me. We'll sell some. Mm. See now, that's why you want to keep it going. Mm -hmm. Want to keep the check coming because you know now you you know I can sit up and have all these babies and keep the card coming. Mm. Look at the job. Mm -hmm. Look at the job. Yeah. So Saul. Saul right here, he, he, he has this conversation with the Lord. Verse 9 says, you see, And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake unto me. This was for Saul. They'd seen everything else, but they didn't hear the voice. The Lord was looking for Saul. Verse 10 says, And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there is, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. So Paul had to go somewhere to find out what it was he needed to do. Just like all of us have experienced, we had to, we had to come to the Church of Christ, and somebody had to tell us and lead us here, because we were all going astray to do our own thing. It's like the brother Craig read in Isaiah 53. So... Let's read on down, and it says that, uh, verse 11 says, And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came unto Damascus, and one Ananias, 
a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelled there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked upon him, I looked upon him, and the Lord, the God of our fathers, had chosen thee, that thou should know his will, and see that that just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. We got to hear the voice of his mouth. We got to hear him tell it, just like it needs to be told. Right. We're the voice of Lord, the Lord's mouth, because we're going to tell it just like it is. And sometimes we, 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 we tell it just like it is. It's not sometimes, we do it all the time. But sometimes we do, we do it maybe a little rough. Sometimes we got to put a little more salt on our words. You know, and sometimes we got to season them a little bit more. You know, but no matter how it comes out, it's still the truth. How can you, how can you tell the truth? I mean, how can you break, how can you take the truth and change it to something else? Because it's always going to be the truth no matter how you use it. You know? You, you, you smoke some meat at the house and don't put no salt on it. You have some people over and they pass it out on a plate. People say, that's good, man. They need a little salt, though. Well, I didn't want to put too much salt on that. Well, you know, you got some salt, brother? You got some salt? I want to put some salt on it. I want some pepper or whatever. So, so, so he had a, Paul has a, the Lord has a mission for him. Verse 15 says, For thou should be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. What better witness than him? What better witness than you and me? What better witness than you and me? I have heard. Verse 16. And now why tarest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even when I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance and saw, and, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive that testimony concerning me. Now, this is like day and night. This is like day and night. I don't know if many of you remember your, your conversion from day to night. I went to work one night, one day. I was a sinner, went back the next night. I was, uh, I was uh, a person nobody wanted to hang around. I remember when I got saved, I was, I was driving, uh, way back on driving concrete trucks. I remember I had a good friend. And uh, the next day I went, I went to work, it was like I was a stranger at my job. It was like I was a stranger. And I started talking, people were like, the same person, I go by his house every now and then, yeah, I'm going to come by there, man. He never, he never came back. Wow. It's kind of like how life is. When you, start, when you start telling the truth, when you, start, when you, when you change your spots from a, from a zebra to just plain brown or yellow, people, people point you out then. Oh, you know, he no longer with us. He no longer with us. You know, that's a shame, but this is, this is, supposed, to be, this is supposed to be a country where a person can speak truth. And, it, and you can. I wouldn't want to go nowhere else and, and try to do that. Oh, no. Because, you know, I think in one country, they, they throwing gay people off the building. I, was, I think, what is that? In, what country is that? Was it India? I forget which country. Iran or something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to strike that. I'm not going to even say that one because I don't have the answer to that one. Oh. But you don't want to go to that country. You know, you want to go to that country. A lot of people have a problem with this country, but go to another country. Mm -hmm. You can get 25 years of life in China for speaking out against the government. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and a lot of people are speaking out against the government right now in China, but then you know they don't like that. They'll put you in jail in a minute mm -hmm. for life. That's too extreme, man. That's really too extreme. Uh, in California, in California, when all this stuff started, uh, they passed a law. The governor there passed a law that people from other other states couldn't come in unless you filled out a, a paper with personal information that you could come in. If you wanted to go to a hotel, you had to fill out some information. You couldn't go in to that hotel unless you filled out some information. They called this another name. But on the other hand, they had a concert coming in. If you were rich and you were some kind of artist, you didn't have to do that from another state. You see? You see? Now, this is what it is if you change your stripes and you, let's say, for instance, you, uh, you, you voted one way and then now you vote in another way. You get, you get ostracized by that party now. This is the same thing here. Paul changed from what he was doing. Now his, his community is ostracizing him. Mm -hmm. Because he couldn't go out and speak out about the same thing he was doing at first. Right. So we get it. We see what happened right there. Okay, so this guy right here. Let's go to, let's go to Acts 7. Let's go to Acts 7. 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 Acts
guy right here was tough. As long as he was with them, he could do anything. He couldn't do nothing wrong. He could stand by and hold their coats and their jackets while they, while they, while they kill a guy. Okay. And it was cool. But if, but if once you change your stripes to who you, and you want to be like the guy that's getting stoned, man, put our coats down. Get out of here, man. We're going to stone you too. We're going to stone you too. Look at uh, uh, Acts 7. Acts 7. We're not going to read the whole chapter. But we know this is about Stephen. And Stephen speaks out. Stephen gives, I'm going to put it this way, a cold-hearted speech. <laughs> he just tells him. He tells me, And he tells him just what he needs to tell him. He, uh, he solves it the best way he can, but he lays it out for them. So we're going to start a little bit above. Because the word he's going to use in verse 51. If you call anybody this name, they'd run you out of town. Yes. But we're going to start at verse 51. Let's just start at verse 50. Has not my hand made all these things... Y'all can read the whole chapter when you get the context. Verse 51 says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Now he's talking about their fathers too. On top of it. Let me look at the time here. Okay, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to do all this right here. but We're going we're gonna to read this chapter. He said, I always resist the Holy Ghost, which... In verse 52, which of the prophets have not your fathers per persecuted? Uh -huh. And they have slain them which showed, which showed befo before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. He said, y'all have killed all the prophets. Your fathers and you have too. And we know this is a fact because we can read the Bible. Verse 53 says, who has received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. And the Lord makes sure you got the law to hear it so you can do it and you haven't even kept it. He says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gashed on him with their teeth. Oh, 55. Oh. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Verse 56 says, and said, behold, I see the heavens open." And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Oh. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopping their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They didn't want to hear it, man. Sorry. They didn't want to hear it. The devil don't want to hear the truth. Amen. You don't want to hear the truth, man. Mm. You don't want to hear the truth. You know, I don't know what example I can use to break, to break that down. I'm going to get come with you. Um, um, I don't have any example. There's plenty that comes to mind, but that I don't want to mention right now. But you don't want to hear the truth. Amen. Want, you don't, the devil don't want to hear the truth. He cut you off. Mm. Yeah, so we will cut you off. You tell the truth about things. <laughs> they get they get mad at you. Want to cut your neck off. Mm. It's just like now, though. You know, uh, me and me and brother keep talks about different things that goes on in the world about politicians and stuff like that. You know, we are supposed to uh um not praise our politics not praise but uh respect because they're in office. Yes. But uh we're supposed to pray for them as well. Mm -hmm. But when you open your eyes to a lot of things that's going on in the world today, we we look at different people that, you know, that run the United States of America and we Say okay, we're gonna vote for this person and not this person. And mm -hmm. when you have people that say, okay, why you vote for this person when all of alone you don't know what he or she is doing behind closed doors? You know, we don't research; we just go and vote. You know, vote for this person. But in reality, you look at it. You know, it doesn't matter on both sides. We are. You know, why do we? fight amongst each other when it comes to you know voting but when you look at it you know we're always supposed to respect the government official because God um, had, he put him in that position for a reason but when, when a man tells the truth you know people hate this man because or hate this woman because you know they're telling the truth they're trying to fix what's wrong but the people won't let him fix what's wrong. So that's why if 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 you if 
if you look at it, you know, we ought to the research the person that we ought, you know, put in office. We right. need to research, but we can't ridicule a person or or say this person, oh, he's not this and that. We supposed to pray for him and make sure he makes the right decision decision for all of us, because he, you know, he or she is for all of us. But we can't let the the media dictate our mindset and say, because you know, the devil gets all in your mix when you when you, when 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 a person try to tell the truth about different things. Yeah. But the devil stirs up a lot of mess and say, okay, he or she is not right for the position. He or she is bad. So guess what? When the devil gets into your mindset. And then that's when all uproar, everything just go crazy because the devil's laughing now yeah. because of what the world is going through. We, I, in my life, I have never seen so much uproar when it comes to politicians. You see politicians everywhere on the news, the media, Facebook, YouTube, and it's a shame that we live by this to have a... The, to, to let the devil come into our mind and say this person is good oh no and all of a sudden you can't even wear t-shirts or hats on your head without even getting bludgeoned mm. or getting beat up mm. you know and, and, and it's a shame that, the, that we, we let the devil come in even, let the devil come into the church mm -hmm. to stop the church from growing and just lock the doors mm -hmm. that's how bad it has gotten with the viruses and all the stuff that's going on and, and it's, it's absurd because we understand that the world is going to come to an end. But as a, as a Christian, we should have an open mindset to say, hey, I think we're getting, we, 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 we're, getting, we're actually going to the left instead of going to the right. So we have to understand where we stand in the truth and research the truth because these bow legged preachers can tell you anything. <laughs> Uh -huh. they, 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 but that's, what, that's what I me and my wife we talk about things I say it's, it's, it's good for us to research before we act upon it let's, let's dig deep into it and research uh -huh. on what on, on what's what and, and, and who's who we have to do that because we can't just assume things and then not research uh -huh. mm. Saint Paul warned up those elders at Ephesus uh, before he left them that he said by the space of three years, you know, uh, that that raging wolves are gonna come inwardly. They're gonna they're gonna come in inwardly. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna come from out. They're gonna come inwardly and change the face of how the how the church looks. But he said three years. It takes time to do a certain thing like that. Mm -hmm. The eleven, you drop the eleven. So it's called you drop the eleven in there. Then yeah, it takes time. Yeah, yeah. It takes time to sway people's minds. And and at at, at some point, it's like you're taking a child, you teach him one thing, and it's all wrong. When he gets to be grown, that's the biggest fight you're gonna have. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest fight you're gonna have to change that mindset. Paul is, Paul is like that, but Paul didn't take that time. Paul changed. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make this. the last comment, then we're gonna get ready for. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make this comment. God said, "I am Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. There is none other like God. God is God all by Himself. Mm -hmm. And in the in when the world was beginning uh, was." Uh, when the world was created in the beginning, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Word was there. The Word is Jesus Christ. He was present. Mm. God sent His Son to die a shameful death mm. for our sins. Mm. We were guilty. After that, on the day of Pentecost, the doors of the church was open. Uh, I, you know, I, I hear different uh, views about different things, but... In saying it correctly, man can't close what God opens. Amen. God started, the church is built upon Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Man couldn't close the doors of the church no way. Mm -hmm. They can close church buildings. Amen. Because just like this room here, we take in, this room is leased, and mm -hmm. we come together. This room is sanct because we the saints are here. Amen. We are the church. Man cannot close the doors of the church because he never opened it. Amen. Praise the Lord, sister. We got faith in this room. Yes. Let's get ready to close. I, I remember years ago, they tried to take prayer out of the school. 
Mm. But I, I always said back then, I said, who, who can stop you from closing your eyes and praying in your seat? Mm. You can't never take prayer out nowhere. Mm. See, you don't have power. You can say it's going to take it out of the school. But you don't really have power when a person can pray in his own mind. Mm. And I know somebody's trying to get a mind machine. They can hear your thoughts. They still they can't even get to the spirit, though, with the mind machine. Let me finish up right here. We're going to go to the close. And we'll start at verse 57. It said, And they cried out with a, with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran up on him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their coats at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Lord, lay not this sin on their charge. And when they had said this, he fell asleep. This is what, if you love the Lord, and your enemy is persecuting you, and you tell the Lord to lay not this sin upon them. You know, I've heard different things about what, what people will do. You know, and I would do the same. I'm going to protect my family, but I'm not going to go out and try to hurt nobody. You try to hurt me, and if it's deadly, to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to retaliate some kind of way. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I want to I wanna, I wanna make sure a person knows about Jesus mm -hmm. before it gets to that point. Mm -hmm. If there's no repentance then, I'm going to either try to get out of there like Jesus did, mm -hmm. or I'm going to have to be back to a wall. Yeah. I'm going to have to do what i got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, last comment, Javier. Yes, uh, you can keep it. You can have a prayer for this. I mean, the mention you mentioned about... Uh, don't let this, let, let this sin against them. Uh, when he said that, uh, God is the one who washes it away, whether they repent or not, uh, because they individually have to get rid of that, come to God and get rid of that sin. Uh, concerning Saul, see, God looked at Saul and considered, okay, he's going to do my will. But God is the one that ultimately washes the sin away, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they have to repent of it, change of it, and get rid of it. The the Hebrews now. Here's the thing: his anger, his anger may be uh, belittled and not take out the wrath because he said, "Forgive them." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because God's anger, God was angry when they killed Christ. And Jesus and Jesus said, "Forgive them." They know not what they do. I reminded me of uh, in the Book of Exodus, I believe. When God wanted to kill all the Hebrews, and God told Moses, I'll make a nation out of you, right? And so, he didn't, see, he, because of he prayed, Moses said, don't kill him. He didn't, God didn't kill him. What he did do, though, is kill them later, because of their sins. But then, Moses, he got down, he broke the golden calf, and then, uh, they, the Levites killed some of the men there, some of the you know people there but the idea is that um, God is looking at each individual heart so all the men that were talking against him while he was on the cross while he was down on the cross you know and Jesus said forgive them for they don't know what they do you know all their sins weren't just washed away God was Amen. considering and looking at okay I'm gonna show you mercy I'm not gonna kill you he was he was measuring because Christ asked and so as Stephen asked you know forgive them for they don't know what they do God heard that, and he's now he's going to, okay, I'm going to see uh, which ones deserve more time, uh, which ones will receive my word in the future, uh, but God's going to judge righteously, you know, so our desire is that, our desire is that God's anger be not unleashed quickly, it's more time be given, but each person has to be accounted for individually.